How you guys doing? Good. Good. A little change in weather, huh? Thought I was coming to Atlanta, it was going to be hot all the time. Not true. Not true. Do we do? Feels like Ohio. That's what I heard. Hey, I'm happy about that. Hey, Coach, just want to uh, discuss uh, you know, Dante Fowler. He says he's healthy, feeling good after the big play last week. And uh, uh, how big would that be for the defense to get him playing that big? Uh, be great. I, I think he's had a good camp. I feel like he's progressing uh, very well. Uh, that was a big strip sack that he had last week. So we just got to keep that thing going in the right direction. And him, uh, would it be a big role for him with giving a running quarterback that uh, the RPOs and the zone reads that uh, you all will have to contend with again this week? Well, it's not only Dante Fowler. It's everybody. It's whoever has him uh, responsibility. We did, obviously didn't do a very good job with that in the first game. Uh, we got to do a better job with that in this game. Be, it was a point of, certainly a point of emphasis. And it doesn't matter who's got him. It's not just Dante Fowler. It's whoever's got him, whoever's assigned to him, has to do a good job and be patient and do their assignment and then take care of the quarterback. How, how these, well, uh, what would be the benefits of having faced this already two weeks ago? Or not, probably not the exact same offense, but the similarity of using some zone reads. Well, the, the, only, the only benefit I see in it is how bad we played it the first time around is that well, hopefully we learned our lesson to do what we're supposed to do and not try to do something that we're not supposed to do, we're not, not do somebody else's job, do, do your job. And if you do your job, uh, there's never going to be a time, trust me, when we play a running quarterback that's RPOs or zone read that we're not going to have somebody on the quarterback, even though it looked like that was the case. And it was the case, and so it's our fault. There's nobody else to blame but the players and the coaches, all of us. So... But that being said, I hopefully we learned our lesson in that do what our job is, is to do. And if we have the quarterback, that's who we have and not try to go tackle the dive if that's who we have. So that's old fashioned option football. And that's really kind of what zone read and RPO stuff is. Boyer was saying after that game that he was a little hesitant at times because of the quarterback leaking out. Is, is that, do you haven't had to talk to him, is, or does that help him that he now saw it once? Is the part where he just hadn't seen it really before? Well, the first thing is it's not the, the terminology you're using there, the quarterback leaking out to me, that's a drop back pass when the quarterback leaks out. When he's, assi not, when he's assigned the run, that's a whole different ball of wax. There's a difference between the quarterback leaking out on you and a, and a quarterback actually designed to run the ball. There's somebody assigned to that quarterback. There's never going to be a time somebody's not assigned to that quarterback. You can't be hesitant. And, you know, and I kind of said to you after, in the first press conference afterwards, it's the first time that we've really sometimes gone live bullets in a game in this new system. And so I'm not trying to make excuses for the players in, in any way, shape, or form. But at the same time, um, I don't know anybody when you, you know, you can do all you want to do in practice. It's about two-thirds the speed of what the game's actually going to be. Because the first time that quarterback takes off, it didn't look anything like the quarterback did on the, on the scout team running that thing. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be fast. So hopefully we learned our lesson in the first game, and, and we're in tune to that coming forward. Yeah, I think we definitely made strides in, in certain areas, um, you know, against Tampa Bay. I thought we – I mean, we hit Tom quite a few times. I mean, we hit him. We didn't always sack him. I think we sacked him, what, three? But uh, – and we hit him, I think, another five. I mean, that's not bad against Tampa and against Tom. So I thought we made some strides there, a little bit on the pass rush, a little bit on the games, um, where we just, um, um, you know, having a hard time with it. We just got to do better in the red area. We, we just – that's a – it's a point of emphasis right now, and it's, and it's um, you know, it's always been a very prideful thing with me that we've been good in the red area and never given up a lot of points. And, uh, you know, we, we're just giving up too many points down there in the red area. We're not getting them stopped. I know sometimes they move down there, but we got to, 
even when the ball, I don't care where they get the ball. It's our job as a defense to go in and stop them. Whether it's, I don't care if they get it on 20, 50, or the minus 20, it's our job to keep them out of the end zone. We're, we're not doing a very good job down there, and we got to coach it better, and we got to play it better. Uh, well, I saw a lot of uh, traits that I've seen in both our nickels uh, that we had, Lardarius Webb at Baltimore and Logan Ryan at Tennessee. And both those guys, we pressured a lot with them. We did certain things with them. And when I watched uh, Isaiah a year ago, I really felt like that he had a lot of those same traits that those guys had, which is good for our system because then I didn't have to change the system just because I got a different guy inside that can't do those things. I thought he could do those things. And I think it was harder to do them in the first game just because of the type of offense that we face. You can't always, you know, pressure the nickel and do all this kind of stuff. And, and you know, they started the game out even in the Philly game by throwing those little bubble passes. Well, if you're sending the nickel, that that's really gets ugly. So it's just there's a lot of things we couldn't do in that game that you know we we might do against somebody else that doesn't have that kind of offense. So it's just um, you know I'm pleased with Isaiah. I, I thought he had the traits that we like to have in a nickel. Yeah. What and, are their traits? A few of them. Being able to blitz, being able to cover, being able to play zones, all those three of those things. It's having versatility, not just being a guy. Hey, I can cover man, but I can't really blitz or I can blitz, but I can't really cover, or I don't really have good zone break on the ball. I mean, it's, it's, those, those three traits are the three traits that you're looking for in any inside, in any inside slot guy. Yeah, something that he, he talked about that I thought was interesting was him really diving into understanding his role in the run game, because that was something that he said, you know, when I was outside, it wasn't something that I actively thought about a whole lot. And now it's like, you know, I have a lot of responsibility when they're running the ball. So I was just kind of curious how you feel like Oh, I think he's done a pretty good job with it. And again, like we've always asked, um, we've always asked our guys, our nickel guys, to be very involved in the run game. Um, it was kind of a interesting stats a couple of years ago. You know, at the end of the year, you always do. Uh, you look back at at all your calls and all your defenses and your fronts and coverages, and generally speaking, with when you play a single high safety coverage, you really got an extra guy in the box. You got seven in the box and they only got six to block you, right? So you, you feel like you're pretty good against the run. Okay, well, when you play cover two, when you play split safety coverage, you only have six in the box. And that's where everybody, a lot of quarterbacks come up and if it's cover two, we check to the run. If it's cover three or middle of the field closed, then you check to the pass. Well, come to, we had a couple of years ago, when we got done doing a study, our best run defense was split safety coverage because of our nickel because our nickel learned how to fit in the run game. And so we basically got the benefit of playing too deep or split safety coverage, but at the same time playing the run well. And that's what Isaiah's been able to kind of do. That's another trait that we look for. Can we do that? Because if you can't do that, you know, you, you, gotta, you better be pretty big up front and pretty multiple up front to be able to stop the run. But, you know, Isaiah gives us that. They see, they've seen all the Baltimore film and all the Tennessee film before. Before There was no sense coming in and watching Atlanta Falcons film from last year. Uh, I don't know what they did. I don't know what they were taught. Nothing against anybody. I mean, to me, it was kind of like everybody said, well, would you really evaluate this guy? No, I, I think everybody gets a clean slate when you start over. Why would I evaluate? I don't know what he was told. I don't know if it was the coach was wrong or he was wrong. I don't know. So why would you, you know, ever evaluate a guy on that and think, boy, this guy's not very good doing that? But I don't, like I said, I don't know. So to me, but I'm tired, you know, they get tired of watching Tennessee and Baltimore film after a while. You want to watch yourself. So that's why I'm glad we're kind of done with that. But in all the installations and we did, anytime I installed something, it was from Tennessee and Baltimore. I'd show both. 
that it wasn't, it was the same, Tennessee guys had to go through the same thing. They had to watch all the Baltimore film. You guys have to watch them both. So it's, that's how you taught it. That's how I had to teach the defense because I, you know, I don't want to just put it on paper and say, okay, here's what you do. I want to show them this is how it was done. And this is how you fit the run. Here's how you play this. Man-to-man -man coverage is man-to-man -man coverage. But, I mean, there's a lot of other things, like when we run a blitz, okay, or a pressure, okay. We've run so many at Baltimore and so many at Tennessee, but when we put it in here, this is how you pull up in the successful pressure and say, this is how it was run. Here's what they're looking at, and that's how you teach them. Right, and that's just individual guys as well. So you give him individual cut-up Yeah, as individual and team. The whole team would see it, so everybody knows what everybody's doing. And then the other part of it is, is that, yeah, you can get individual. Because the other thing is, is I don't, you know, we've talked about it before, I don't want Isaiah to be the only guy that knows how to play nickel. What happens if he breaks a helmet strap and somebody else has to go in a game? Hopefully somebody else knows how to play nickel, too. So you do it both. They, they get their individual tapes from their position coaches. I give them the overall tape of the defense. Here's how it was done. And then the individual coaches take it, and then they meet with them and do it individually. And then they have cut-ups that those guys can actually watch on their own. What's that? Who's your scout team, Daniel Jones? Who's Daniel Jones this week? Uh, Josh and Felipe, two quarterbacks. Are, are they fast enough and athletic enough to give you a good look there? They're, they're who we got. I mean, I, what am I, I put a wide receiver back there and he can't throw the ball at all. That's not going to really help me either. Right. So, and if I put the guy back there and it's only a run, wouldn't be real rocket science. If I'm a defensive player going, they aren't going to throw the ball here. I'm going to play the run. They got to be able to know if it's going to be a run or a pass. So the, both of them did a, are doing a great job for us. Oh yeah, Coach, uh, the, uh, what do you see from the Giants attack? They got a lot of weapons, uh, numbers, uh, the running backs back, uh, wide outs, uh, Shepard and uh, Galladay. Uh, how are they trying to attack people? Well, again, the, the quarterback's a big threat because he's got a chance. You know, the passing game makes it harder because the quarterback's a threat to run the ball. So it just if all of a sudden you're gearing up and loading up to the quarterback, then you know you got to worry about being and having enough coverage to stop the passing game. And they got not only two good receivers, they got two pretty good tight ends too. And so and then the running back is, you know, he's a good one. I mean, I've faced him before, and I mean Barkley is a he's a hell of a back. And so, yeah, they got a lot of weapons. It's just it's we got to we, we got to. We got to play like we're able to play. We we got to play us. We just got to if we can improve in some areas as much as we improve from week one to week two, in other areas we we improved in some. We didn't improve enough in others. But if we can make that stride in the others this week, then I then I'm going to feel pretty good about it. How's T.J. Uh, Green doing? Uh, you got to go in there and play last week, and uh, how, how do you do? Well, the truth was with T.J. Roy going in and playing last week, Roy wasn't based on the injury. He's really earned the right to go in and play. We actually already had him in a rotation, and at some point in time we were even going to use him possibly as a safety, but then we couldn't because he had to go play corner and couldn't do it. But he's done a great job. He's learned how to play corner. He's learned how to play safety, and he's earned the right, regardless of whether there was an injury or not, he's earned the right to, to get some playing time. No, had nothing to do with Duran. Has to do with Hawkins earning the right to play. You know, if you're a guy out there and you're busting your butt every week and you're doing well, and the coaches say you're doing well, then now, you know, I, I need a little playing time, and we need him to get in there and play some. And the other part of it is, if we didn't feel like we had a, totally trusted him to do a good job, we wouldn't put him in. We're not putting him in there just to play him, just to get some playing time. He earned the right to get in there and play because he's done the things right and he's practiced well and practiced hard. And he deserves that right to get in there and play some. What does Ricky Grant have to do to get to that point? Pardon? What does Ricky Grant have to do to get to that point? Just learn the defense better. He's just uh, he's just a, he's a rookie. It's it's a lot of defense. It's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, it's just it's he's just got to get to that point where he's just he he knows it, and we know he knows it. How far away might he think he might be? I don't know, Michael. I I can't tell you. I have no idea. Last question? Any more questions? Awesome.
Okay, thank you guys.